Sweets Darling and this week I'm going to show you how to make a tropical themed cake. This cake is from my friend Mary Beth. She loves all things tropical. Pineapples, flamingos, bright colours, just all those kind of things she is very much into. I'm starting with my cakes already iced here. Just last week I did a very detailed tutorial on how to split, fill, crumb coat and ice cake. So I will link to that right into this video if you need to know how to get to this stage that I'm starting at here. For my top tier I want to use some sequin like sparkly bits but they're not sequins they are I think more sparkly than sequins and they are tiny little squares made by CK products so I knew I wanted to use these gold glitter squares and I would need a base on my white fondant now I could have iced the cake in a more goldy coloured fondant to start with but I really wasn't sure when I was making this cake what I was going to be doing and which order I was going to do stuff in I didn't want to limit myself until I knew so I left it white and I decided a really good idea would be to paint the tear using sweet sticks and whilst it's still tacky put the gold squares on I was like this is genius rather than me painting and having to wait for it to dry and then brushing it with piping jelly which is what I would normally do and then adding the squares I'll do it in one step so that I did I used my sweet sticks honey gold and a flat stable paintbrush and I brushed all over my cake with the honey gold this was straight out of the bottle I just had to shake it up a few times to make sure the colour didn't settle I then very generously used the CK glitter squares I poured them into my hand and I brought my hand up the cake whilst gently pouring the squares onto it so they stuck to the paint now this was working brilliantly, I was like, I'm a bloody genius, this is amazing, what a time saver. This is now what I need to do for all my sequin sparkly cakes. There's a however, so I finished that tier, really happy with it, chuffed to bits with my ingenious idea of using the paint to stick it. What didn't I consider though? That the paint will completely dry and not be even slightly tacky and they'll just drop off. So I was working on the cake later and as I, I think I was making flowers for it, but I was noticing it was all, I'd stacked it together already, it was all clean around the top tier and then there was just squares appearing over and I was like what's happening where are they coming from so I just touched a piece of it boom, straight off and basically where the paint had dried underneath there was nothing holding them there again and I was like damn it what am I going to do now the cake's already stacked together so the only option I had because I was not taking them all off again and sticking them on like that no expensive time consuming everything so I got my PME glaze spray and I sprayed all over them and it just stuck them to the sides of the cake. So to recap, don't do what I did and stick me using paint. To get it right in the first place, paint your cake whatever colour you want, or ice it the colour that you want and let it dry, and then brush it lightly in piping jelly, and then put your glitter squares on with that. So now my sequin tier is done, I wanted to move on to my bottom tier. Now, the story behind this tier is that I've been seeing for ages all these beautiful tropical leaf tiers on cakes, thinking, oh my god, how are these people doing this? People who don't normally paint a single thing have suddenly got these amazing painted cake tiers on there and uh, forgive me if I'm way behind and just have been slow to realising what it is but they're edible images not paint some of them are paint like some people are amazing painters but people who don't paint cakes suddenly having like these amazing effect tiers edible images for this I have my own edible printer less than reliable would highly recommend not getting an edible printer and just ordering them online I tend to end up buying a new one every year to 18 months like they just go wrong all the time so once this one goes I'll just be ordering them online. All I did was google tropical leaves and found a pitch that I liked, put it into Word, printed out a few sheets of it, cut it to the right height of my cake and then I brush water all the way around my cake, not soaking, just damp, peel the backing sheet off the edible images and then press the edible images around the sides of the cake and I use the backing sheet to smooth it around because that's just an acetate, it's not going to stick. You don't want to use your hands to smooth the edible images, you will smudge the ink and potentially tear the paper as well because once it's come into contact with the water obviously it all gets a bit wet and wants to dissolve so handle it as little as possible. I then wanted to stack my cakes together so for that I just used some plastic drinking straws. This is only a two tier so it doesn't need much more than that. I mark out when my five dials are going to go. Now I do remember when I was recording this I marked out my five holes, pushed my first dial in and cut it and then realised that my camera wasn't on. So I'm just showing you here with a straw where I marked out my five and then I'm going to cut another straw by pushing it into the same hole, cutting it to that height and then I used that first dial to measure the rest of my dowels. I then push all five dowels into the cake, spray it over some royal icing and then lift my top tip onto it. I always use my palette knife to lift the cake up, put the back edge down
down and then lift the cake down with the palette knife so I'm not handling it too much with my hands. Now I was really torn here on whether to use fresh flowers or sugar flowers but I thought I really want like the good Hawaii vibes for this cake so I went with sugar flowers so I could really control the colours. So I used Squares Kitchen flower paste for all these flowers. Two types of the flowers were made using blossom sugar art cutters and moulds. They literally come as a set cutter and mould so you can cut out the flower, put it into the mould and then emboss the pattern on the top of it and then let them dry in indented foam. And don't forget all these products I will link to underneath this video so you don't have to worry about where to get everything you can just click on whatever it is you might want and it will take you straight there and then with my pink paste I use the FMM Hawaiian flower set and I chose the medium size and the small size and for these I cut the flower out moved it onto a foam pad and then used a ball tool just to run over the very edges of the petals to thin them out slightly and again I placed these on my indented foam so they dried with some shape my leaves I rolled up my green paste and just used a cutting wheel to cut out some freehand leaf shapes so I just started narrow at one end came out to a curve and went in narrow at the top and once it was cut out I just ran the cutting wheel up the center of the leaf to indent a vein now these I pinched at the base so it curved up towards the base and then most of my curve back slightly and again left them on my indented foam so there was just some movement to them and they weren't flat boring leaves now the next tip I'm going to tell you is probably the most useful tip ever for making flowers or anything that needs to be really bright and colorful and have some life and zest to it it is so so simple it's yellow dust in the center of flowers it makes the world of difference it can take any flat looking flowers and transform them to look like they're glowing from the middle that's the whole idea from it to look like the flowers are glowing from the center so i use my squires kitchen sunflower yellow dust get a bit on a brush knock it off onto some tissue and then just brush in the center of the flower outwards on the petals a little bit and you do only want a tiny bit of dust on there you don't want big thick lines if you like you just want like i say a glow from the middle i also did it on my leaves so i started at the base and just brushed some yellow up each leaf for the sense of my flowers I use some royal icing. I will link to my recipe for royal icing underneath this video as well. I coloured some yellow and piped the centre of my white flowers with a small yellow dot. I piped the centre of my pink flowers with a big yellow dot and I coloured some pink and piped the centre of my orange flowers with three small dots. To actually decorate the cake I inserted the topper that Mary Beth ordered for her own birthday cake. I think she got this off eBay. Once that was in I then used royal icing to stick the flowers to the cake. I did an arrangement of the flowers and leaves on top of the cake around the topper and I then did some on the edge of the second tier coming up the top tier and then I put the whole cake on a cake board and did a small arrangement right at the bottom of the cake as well to balance everything out and then I stood back and sent a snapchat to my sister saying obsessed with this cake I love it I love it it's completely different to anything else I've ever done before Mary Beth just got her topper and said just you know what I like so gone with it and I hope she does like it I'm taking it to her birthday party tomorrow so I'm very excited about it as well as her liking it I hope that you like it as well don't forget I've linked to everything I've used my recipe for my royal icing my video for how to ice a cake to actually get to the beginning stage of this everything is underneath this video so hopefully I've covered it all but let me know if you have any questions at all by commenting underneath if you are baking or cake decorating this week make sure you take photos upload them to instagram use hashtag yes darling and i will give you a shout out in my stories on monday i really hope you enjoyed that i hope you have a brilliant week and i will see you next monday